last session with the with the R F funding, we took out of Article Two uh, roughly the four the four point what two four four point four billion dollars. We took the G R out, and we 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 sure, we put in the R F funding, and we took the general revenue out of Article Two and placed it elsewhere. So we intentionally put ourselves in this position. Um, so yes, we have a uh, six billion dollars, so to speak, that's looming the next time, but it will continue to loom at session after session after session. But that's a decision we we are, we are making by not funding. We are intentionally putting ourselves in a position where the next time we're going to face these shortfalls. That's a power decision that we made. No one forced us to take $4 billion out of Article 2 the last time and take the federal money. We made that. We made that choice. And, and that was not one-time funding. That was not one-time funding. What we did, so everybody will be clear, that was $4 billion in general revenue in Article 2. We took the $4 billion in general revenue out of Article 2 to put it someplace else, and we took the federal dollars and and, and substituted and put it in Article 2. Now the federal dollars are gone. And, and Chairman Zerha was correct me if I'm wrong. We, we now have a, a gaping hole in Article 2 that we did not, that we have not plugged this time around. We just left it, we just left the hole there. So, but, but when the governor accepted the stimulus money, the order was we had to spend it. I, I understand. But I'm just saying, but in doing so, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, we took the general revenue. We took revenue that was there out. That's right. And so now it makes it even more glaring when we're having to face face uh, the situation with, without any additional monies. I, I just wanted to speak to uh, Representative Riddle's uh, comment about identifying those things which were deemed to be one-time efforts. and. And in fact, we did in the deliberations of the subcommittee. That question was brought up several times over as to whether, when we modified certain rates, uh, you know, for what we recognized might be a two-year period of time, that we knew the possibility of coming back in and having to accept uh, whatever this budget, you know, handed us is that we is, is what we would have to face. And so. Um, it doesn't make it any easier, necessarily. Uh, it, it does impact the ability of, of us to be able to deliver the services uh, safely and effectively. But, but we did have those, those conversations, and um, I think the fact that we, we are looking at a, a very, very substantial uh, budget shortfall, if you're a revenue shortfall, in terms of maintaining services relevant to what we've been able to do this biennium, is, is a reflection of the fact that we made the conscious decision that for two years, we would do things that we otherwise would not be able to do, as opposed to just forego that money at all. Um, we also, in acceptance of the stimulus money, modified some of our maintenance of eligibility. And so there are things that we are living with now as a consequence of that, as well as the Health Care Reform Act that have come forward, that we have less wiggle room than we had perhaps several years ago in terms of things that we could do in order to help us bring this article in um, in line with the amount of revenue that has been uh, has been appropriated or, or suggested to us, and so, so as we as we look at the things that are in here and we discuss them, and and I will say some of them are are, are very substantial, uh, Mr. Chairman. I would say that this this proposed article reflects substantial efforts to cut in order to bring this article in within the realm of the revenue that the state is recognizing that it may have, and. Throughout our deliberations as a subcommittee, these things were recognized as substantial cuts. And every one of the members of my subcommittee will reflect on the fact that, that we looked at the fact that there are things that we're not going to be able to do in this article within the realm of the revenue that we have available to us today. And so um, if somebody is under the illusion that we haven't been about the business <laughs> of cuts, uh, to make Article 2 come in, I would hope that after this day and the next couple of days, whatever, uh, that, that people will clearly recognize that it has been the business of this committee uh, to bring this article in in a way that, that meets what right now is the revenue projections for the state of Texas.